Hey, badass business owner, if you're starting a new business and you're wondering how you should set your prices, then this might be the video for you. Not only will we talk about what you need to do prior to setting the price, I'll walk you through three examples on how you can do the math to make sure you have the right price to begin with. Now, the first thing you should have already done by now is check with your competitors and see what it is that they have their pricing set at. Please note, this doesn't mean you're going to copy their prices, but you need to know what your competition is charging. However, it is more than just their price. Your goal is to not be cheaper than them. This is not a race to the bottom. You want to know not only what they charge, but what are the quality of the products they use? What do you get for the price? What types of people are using them? How are they targeting them? All of this will give you good insight to make sure that you are pricing your products and services correctly for what it is that you will offer. But keep in mind, the most important thing you need to do when setting your prices is to make sure you can pay the bills. Sales are great, but the game is about creating profits. Now, for most of you, you already have an idea of what you plan to charge. So let me show you how you can do some simple math to make sure that this price will be profitable. And if you've watched any of my videos or listened to my podcast, then you know there's only one calculation you really need to memorize. And that is this, sales minus cost of goods minus expenses equals your profits. You're going to hear me say this multiple times times. This is the most important thing you need to keep in mind when you're setting your prices because it is basically the flow of money through your business. You will use it on your pricing and as you start to sell stuff and you look at your number one report, it is also on your profit and loss income statement. A huge mistake small business owners make is they only worry about the gross margin they should have. Gross margin is the sales price minus any costs it takes to provide the service or make the product. However, your pricing must also cover all the business's expenses, your taxes, money you plan to reinvest back into the business, as well as paying you a fair wage for working in the business and any business profits you hope to make. Now, key thing here, you are both an employee in your business and the business owner. So you're going to hear me really push you to make sure that you are including a fair wage for the work you do inside of your business. Keep in mind, the price might be one simple little price, but it covers so much because it's going to cover your costs in your business and your expenses and so much more. This is why it's important that you set your price correctly from the get go. Don't worry, you don't have to be an expert in the beginning, but if you go in armed with some good information, you'll start off way ahead of where you would have started. Now let's use some examples to show you how this all works. It all starts with sales. So the first thing you're going to do is pick the price that you're thinking of charging, and we will use that price to see how it's going to play out. You can always tweak it up or down, like I said, based off of what you discover as you go. Now we're going to use two different business owners. We're going to have business owner A who has a monthly service they provide for $50 and business owner B has a product that they make and they also sell it for the same $50. Let's see how each of them have done on setting their price. We will start to use our calculation of sales minus cost of goods minus expenses equals profits. So for both of them, we'll plug in the first number, which we know is $50. Our next item is going to be cost of goods. So let's take a look at that. Regardless of what type of business you have, cost of goods are going to be very similar. Now, when I say cost of goods, sometimes you'll hear people refer to them as COGS. They are the same thing. C-O-G-S, cost of goods, same thing. There are two main things that go into your cost of goods. They are basically the material, the products, or the ingredients you use to create or provide the product or service that you sell. It will also cover any labor hours that are necessary to provide this product or service. Let's take a closer look. If you make a product that you sell, you will just add up all of the stuff that goes into making it. If you make things in batches, you will add up everything for the batch and then divide it by the number that you made. For example, if you have $100 in materials or ingredients, but make 10 of them, then you'll take the $100, divide it by the $10, and this tells you that for each product, you have $10 in materials or ingredients. If you just happen to buy it from one person, then turn around and sell it, it'll be just that one price. So if you buy it for $6 and then turn around and sell it, there is no additional stuff to it. You're just going to have cost of goods of $6. Now, if you have packaging that you give to the customer, then you're going to also need to include this in your cost of goods. So let's just say you buy 100 boxes at $25, then each box has a cost of 25 cents. So don't forget to capture that as well. Basically, if you give it to the customer, it's going to be in your cost of goods. Now, if you have a service-based business, you're going to do the same thing. Cleaners might have 
some products that they use, but it's not all used in one house. So they may hey, say this works in multiple houses, but for this particular house, it's going to be X. So you're just going to guesstimate what you use per home. However, if you go buy something from Home Depot and use the entire thing in that particular sale, then you're just going to use that cost. Now, remember, your cost of goods is more than just the products and materials that you use. It also includes fair labor. You will have labor hours involved if you make or produce the product that you sell, and you will have labor in the service that you provide. People are paying for the service that you're doing. So it's going to have labor costs. It's very important that these are included. It's probably the biggest mistake new business owners make is they fail to forget that they wear two hats in that business. Remember, you are an employee and a business owner. We need to make sure that we capture the employee time that you spend because it is part of your cost of goods. So let's take a look at a couple of examples. If a cake maker takes four hours to make, bake, and decorate a cake, then there should be four hours of labor included. Let's just use a fair wage of $20. I'll use that throughout the whole video. Then you know you have $80 in labor hours in addition to any ingredients that they use to make that cake. If someone takes three hours to make a batch of 20 candles, then there will be three hours or 180 minutes divided by the 20 products that they made. So that means it's nine minutes per item. I don't believe in using these weird numbers. Just do everything in quarter increments. So 15 minutes would be the lowest that you would use. So if you take the fair wage of $20 divided by four, then that's going to give you a labor cost of $5. And our service-based person is actually the easiest because if it takes them an hour and a half to do something at that same $20, then they will have a $30 labor cost. Now back to our two business people that we've been using. It's time to fill in the next part of our calculation of sales minus cost of goods minus expenses equaling our profits. Business owner A, our service-based business, has a low product use of $5, but they have a labor hour that needs to be included at $20. So that tells us that their cost of goods is $25. Business owner B, our product-based business, does a batching process that works out very similar to the same 15 minutes we did in the exercise earlier. So they know that their labor hour is going to be $5. However, they use $10 in materials, so their total cost of goods is going to be $15. So their calculations are going to look like this. For our service-based business, it's going to be $50 minus $25 for their cost of goods. And for our product-based business, $50 minus $15 for their cost of goods. Now it's on to the next part of our calculation, the expenses. Now here's where you're going to need to do a little bit more math, but we will make it simple. Since you are a new business, you really do not have any history to use. And normally I just have you go to your profit and loss, pull up what percentage your expenses typically run. But since you don't have that, you'll need to do some guesstimating in the beginning. Now on your operational expenses, remember these are all the expenses your business will have that were not included in your cost of goods. It will start with advertising, any bank fees, equipment rentals, insurance, gas, uniforms, you name it. If it wasn't in your cost of goods, it is here. If your business pays for it, it's basically going to be an expense. So let's just say that both our business owners did their homework and figured out that the service-based business owner is going to run about $1,000 because he's gonna have more travel, auto, gas, stuff like that. And our home-based business owner is gonna have closer to $500. Now keep in mind, this will change the longer you are in business. You will forget stuff. You'll add stuff. You just need to make sure that you keep adjusting as needed. Right now, we're just looking for a basic number that we can use. We will use this number to figure out a basic percentage that your business can be using to do the calculation. So in order to do this, we need to figure out about how many sales you can expect a month. Now, you don't want to just pull out a number from thin air saying, oh, I really want to do $5,000. Well, you may or may not do $1,000, but we can put some realistic numbers together knowing what it is that we know. So let's use our two business owners as example. Business A, our service-based business owner, thinks he'll be able to help 20 customers a week. And assuming a four-week month means he should help about 80 people a month. He can now assume that 80 customers at the $50 means he should be expecting 4,000 in sales each month. Knowing this, he can now take his $1,000 in expenses and calculate out what percentage needs to be set aside from each sale. All he has to do is take the expenses and divide it by the sales. So $1,000 divided by $4,000 means 25% of each sale will now go towards expenses if he hits the numbers that he thinks he's going to hit. So we can take the $50 times it by the 25% and he'll know that he needs to account for $12.50 from each sale is going to have to go towards expenses. 
We'll plug that in here shortly. Let's figure out our product-based business owner. They also sell their product for $50, and they're thinking they're going to be able to sell about five of these a week. Over that same four-week month, they will probably sell 20 of them. So we take our 20 sales times the $50, and they will have sales of $1,000. And since we know that their expenses are $500, it means that half of the $1,000 in sales is going to go towards their expenses. This math is easy. It's 50%. So 50% of every sale needs to now be set aside for expenses. This means that out of the $50 sale, they'll know $25 has to be set aside. So let's go back to our calculation for both of them. Once again, we know sales minus cost of goods minus expenses equals profits. Business owner A now looks like this. A $50 sale minus their cost of $25 minus the new expenses of $12.50 means that they will have a profit of $12.50. Remember, this is potential profit, assuming that everything goes as planned. Our product-based business has sales of $50 minus their $15 in cost of goods minus the $25 their expenses are going to run, which tells us that they have a potential profit of $10. The question becomes, is this a good number? Well, if it was negative, we knew it wasn't. But ultimately, we have to say, will this number now work for our pricing? It's really up to them, but we can plug it in and at least see what they should be looking at for the month. Our service-based business owner thought they would do 80 sales. So 80 sales times the $12.50 in profit means the business should have about $1,000 in profits at the end of the month. If our business owner did it correctly, they made money both as the employee, remember we captured their fair wage, and depending upon what they do with the profits, they will make some extra money as the business owner. Our product-based business owner had 20 sales at $10 in profit. So in their business, they're going to make $200 in profit for their business. And since they were also paid as an employee, we know that they got paid as well. Both are not bad. They can either raise their profit by selling more or by raising their prices. But that's a video for a different day. Keep in mind, you're going to be adjusting your prices every few months as you get more information. You don't have to be perfect out the gate. Want to see one more time? Let's take a look at one more example to see how this works. Once again, we have sales minus cost of goods minus expenses equals profits. This time we have a dog groomer that plans to charge $60 per dog. They also know they will probably do four dogs a day, which will come out to about 20 dogs a week or 80 dogs a month. This means 80 dogs times the $60, they should have about $4,800 a month in sales. They also know their expenses are going to be around that same $1,000. Knowing this, we just take the $1,000 divided by the 4,800 and we know that we're looking at about 21% is going to be needed to pay their expenses. So we plug all of this into their calculation. Sales minus cost of goods minus expenses equals profits. Yes, I'm a broken record. The sale is $60 and she knows that her cost of goods, she has about $5 per pet for shampoo and a little bow that she likes to give them. She also knows that she can knock out a dog in an hour, but most of them will take somewhere between an hour, hour and a half. So she wants to err on the high side. So she's going to put in a fair wage of $20 at the one and a half hours means she needs to account for $30 in labor hours. This makes her cost of goods a total of $35. Now let's figure out what her expenses are going to run. If her sales are $60 and she knows she needs to set aside 21%, it means she needs to set aside $12.60 out of every sale for her expenses. When we plug all this in, it's $60 minus $35 in cost of goods minus $12.60 for her expenses means her profit is going to be about $12.40 per dog. If she hits her goal of 80 dogs in a month, she's looking at $80 times $12.40 or $992 in profit, basically roughly $1,000. But remember, she was also paid as an employee in the business. She will then use this number to help pay her taxes, buy any new equipment, and maybe pull out a little bit as the business owner. Hopefully you can see that this is a calculation that will really help you understand if you're pricing correctly from the start. All you need to do is figure out some basic numbers and you should have a good shot at being profitable. The key is to capture your time as an employee in your costs. It is by far the biggest mistake new business owners make, and it costs them tons of profit. Please do not make this mistake. You have an employee hat you wear and a business owner hat. And as long as you are an employee in your business, you need to make sure that you are capturing fair wages for the employee time that you spend. And if you like what you see, make sure you hit the subscribe button and check out the other videos and start with this one on the screen that's going to help you understand your profit and loss statement better because it's actually going to follow the same sales minus cost of goods minus expenses equals profits and it'll help make the entire thing make more sense. It is by far the number one report you need to know in your business. I will see you on the next video.